Good day. I will be presenting a presentation on the differential diagnosis of sciatic leg pain. Sciatica is a symptom due to irritation of the component of the sciatic nerve resulting in, in buttock and leg pain, typically radiating down beyond the knee into the foot. However, our patients do not present with sciatica, but rather variations of buttock and leg pain and a much wider differential should be held. When a patient presents to us with buttock and leg pain, our first thought is that of a sequestrated paracentral disc, such as indicated on the MRI scan here. However, the disc herniation may not be paracentral, but in the foramen, as demonstrated here on the left at L4-5. On the sagittal view, one can see the loss of the hyperintense signal of fat with a nerve root compressed up by the disc under the pedicle. Here's an example of an L5-S1 level with a right-sided extra foraminal disc sequestration. The L5 nerve root exits the 5-1 foramen on the right and as it goes round anteriorly is irritated by this disc causing sciatica. We need to hold a much wider differential for leg pain, else we will miss non-spinal pathology. One can think of this in two main groups, that being local pathology and referred pathology. In terms of local pathology, the most common uh, cause of pain would be that of the hip. Sadly, this is not infrequently missed. Clues to hip pathology would be patients presenting on crutches. It's very seldom that a spine patient will require crutches. In addition, the patient with a hip pathology generally has antalgic gait or limp, groin pain, and pain in this groin with provocative internal rotation. We are taught that pain that radiates beyond the knee is due to a spinal cause and should the pain radiate but stop above the knee, this is the hip. Sadly, this is not always true. Here is a patient of mine with lupus who presented with a clear L5 distribution of pain all the way down to the dorsum of foot and involving the hallux. An MRI scan was requested which confirmed a completely normal spine. In disbelief, I repeated the scan, including the pelvis. Here you can clearly see the change in signal in the left femoral head, which indicates avascular necrosis from the steroid usage to treat the lupus condition. One needs to remember that although hip pathology may cause pain to radiate down to the knee, it may present as isolated knee pain. Thus any patient presenting with knee pain on its own must have the hip examined to confirm there is not primary hip pathology. Hamstring tightness from trauma can mimic sciatic type symptoms and can be difficult to differentiate from the tightness experienced with pa patients with spondylolisthesis. Deep vein thrombosis can result in pain in the leg. There may be associated swelling, but not always, with clinical tests being pretty nonspecific. One needs to remember the risk factors of hypercoagulable states and long travel, Typically, there is no sensory disturbance in DVT, which helps differentiate between sciatica. Peripheral neuropathy typically occurs in a glove and stocking distribution and may be prevalent in patients with conditions such as diabetes. When a patient presents with sensory loss in the distal limb, it's important to check the upper limbs to make sure there is not the typical glove and stocking distribution.
Vascular insufficiency can also result in leg pain on exercise such as walking. However, resolution of the pain is typically far faster than experienced with spinal stenosis. It's not dermatomal. There's usually skin changes of ischemia and there may well be a pulse volume deficit. But beware of coexistent vascular and spinal disease in our elderly patient group. Occasionally we are faced with the rare and the horrible and we need to do a full examination of our patients and not simply accept sciatica type symptoms to be that of a spine pathology. Here's an example of a 44 year old social runner who complained of shin splints for a prolonged period of time with increasing pain and finally a palpable mass in his distal tibia. This turned out to be a primary bone tumour. If we look at referred pathology, we must remember that the nerves can be irritated proximally and still result in distal neurological symptomatology. Here's such a case where a man presented with acute onset of right gluteal pain, thought to be sciatica by his physician. Two weeks later, he developed weakness and an MRI scan confirms a conus tumour. Other causes of spinal cord equina compression are facet hypertrophy, typically causing lateral recess stenosis. The facet degeneration may result in a, a cyst such as seen here on the right hand side compressing the neurological elements at that level. With spinal deformity and asymmetrical disc degeneration, one can get foraminal stenosis and pain. One needs to be careful as this may only manifest in the weight-bearing uh, position and may not be fully appreciated in supine investigations. Uh, lytic spondylolisthesis typically causes foraminal stenosis due to the disc height collapse and forward lysthesis of the vertebra. Here's an example of the MRI of a lytic, lysthesis, lytic lysthesis patient with uh, narrowing of the foramen to explain the L5 ridiculous symptoms. Here is a patient who presents with a lytic lesion of the sacrum. You can see that this is long-standing, slow process due to the sclerotic process around the lysis in keeping with Wolf's law of increasing bone stock when loaded. The patient presented with cordia equina and an MRI scan was performed. Her MRI scan confirms multiple Hyperintense lesions typical of hydatid disease. Here's an intraoperative picture where the cysts have been removed. This metastatic neuritis can also present with leg pain. Typically, on examination, there's a polyneuropathy, and when this is suspected, a contrasted MRI scan should be used, which generally shows increased uptake around the nerve roots. This may require repeated lumbar punctures to identify the metastatic cells um, on cytology. Herpes zoster neuritis may well present in a dermatomal fashion often preceded by severe radicular pain with the appearance of vesicles a few days later. This typically occurs in low immune states such as following chemotherapy, HIV or general malnutrition. This young male presented with severe L5 radicular pain and an MRI scan was requested. This yielded this bizarre looking scan 
one can see distal degeneration at the distal two mobile segments with increased signal in the annulus, which may be the cause of his pain, or the vascular malformation resulting in this flow phenomena could equally have been the cause. He was managed for his avascular malformation and his pain resolved. One needs to remember that the L5 and S1 nerve roots exit and run anterior to the sacrum into the lumbar plexus and are vulnerable to irritation which may also result in sciatica. Here's an exam example of a 30 year old patient presented with isolated L5 nerve root pain, straight leg raised positive. On MRI scan you can see increased signal in the right sacroiliac joint with subsequent destruction of that joint in comparison to the left and turned out to be a Staph aureus infection. Likewise, a 75-year-old woman stepped off a small step, resulted in acute pain in the buttocks down the leg in an L5 distribution. On careful review of the x-ray, one can see a step in keeping with an insufficiency fracture of the iliac blade. This 13-year-old fell off a horse. She's had acute pain in the buttock, able to get up and run to safety, but developed a progressive dysesthetic L5 nerve root pain. MRI scan shows increased signal in the left sacrum, as well as the CT reconstruction confirms the impaction fracture of the sacrum and the small, small spikes. Uh, conservative care failed and the patient had to undergo anterior surgery to remove the spike where I found it pushing into the back of the lumbar sacral trunk. This patient presented with L5 nerve root pain. One can identify the asymmetry of the sacral alar with loss of the cortical definition on the left hand side, indicative of an invasive condition. The MRI scan reveals the hypo-intense lesion in the left alar, indicative of metastatic tumour. It's important to remember that the L5 nerve root exits the foramen, and runs around the disc and anterior to the sacral alar, placing it at extreme risk of injury in that area. Other intrapelvic pathologies include ovarian disease, and the piriformis muscle is also thought to cause sciatica at times. Anomalies of the sciatic nerve can occur where it runs through the muscle and any pathology in the muscle itself can cause increasing symptoms. This may be overdiagnosed by some but probably exists in a few patients. The take home message is leg pain is not equal to disc pathology. The MRI scan can be misleading as many patients will have abnormal MRI scans without symptoms. 28% of a normal adult population will have MRI changes in the lumbar spine. Simply because you see change in MRI scan does not mean it is the cause of leg pain. One needs to consider a much wider differential and exclude other causes before correlating the spine pathology to the symptoms and carrying on with treatment. Thank you.